Some people are making a big switch on their devices, going from light background and black words to the opposite, dark background and light text. It's what's known as dark mode. Apple, Android, Windows, and a lot of social media platforms have it now. And there are all sorts of claims. Those include that it reduces eye strain, improves battery life, and helps you stay focused. But the opposite may be true when it comes to your eyesight. The American Optometric Association pointed us to research that found reading dark letters on a white background is easier, but more importantly, it's how long you look at the screen. When it comes to eye health, it's the duration of use that's really more important than the mode or the intensity of the brightness. Most people have more of a problem with longer duration of use of a device. President Barbara Horn says on average Americans spend about seven hours a day looking at devices and nearly 60% experience eye strain. They recommend following the 20-20-20 screen rule. So every 20 minutes, take a 20 second break and look 20 feet away to relax your eyes. Horn says the screen brightness should match the lighting around you. Brighter during the day and dimmer at night, which is also important for our internal body clocks because light helps regulate the sleep hormone melatonin. Anything you can do to bring your internal rhythms in line with your kind of work social schedule is something that can be considered beneficial. Dr. Timothy Brown studies the body's rhythm in the UK. With all the concern about screen time and blue light exposure at night, Brown and his team looked at how light color impacted mice's body clocks. They found that blue light actually had less of an impact than yellow light. The effect of color we found on, on the body clock um, was, was exactly the opposite to what people might naively have predicted. That research mirrors what the eye doctor said. Bright, warmer lights in the day and dim, cooler lights in the evening is what's best. Snowstorms across the country are some of the hardest weather events to predict. Now a new tool could change that. Tomorrow on the Now, we're looking at how it works and what it could teach us about the water supply all over the world, too. And we have some pretty active weather over the next 48 hours. That wintry mix arriving late tomorrow. And then as we go into Saturday, it transitions to rain, but those temperatures will fall on some gusty northwest winds. That sends temperatures into the teens for highs on Sunday and just 23 Monday. Thanks for joining us here on the Now Indy. The News at 6 starts right now. This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. Domestic violence is a very real issue for these group of people. Now at 6, a new effort to protect some of our most vulnerable citizens from domestic violence. The new steps city leaders are taking tonight. Donald J. Trump has abused the powers of the presidency. The impeachment of President Trump now in the hands of the Senate. The new developments ahead of the third impeachment trial in American history. I have snow, freezing rain, and rain all in the forecast, and we still have more to talk about. A woman sitting with her dogs in downtown Indianapolis approached by a man who said he was going to kill her and her dogs. What she did to get the man to leave, it's something every dog owner needs to hear. A chase ends in the middle of an interstate backing up traffic. What we're now learning about the people inside the car. Good evening to you. I'm Amanda Starantino. And I'm Mark Mullins. First at 6, a new reinforced effort to help some of the most vulnerable populations. That is the goal of a new plan outlined by the Domestic Violence Network. And leaders there say more needs to be done for black and African-American women, as well as those in the LGBTQ plus communities. Megan Sinktorum explains what steps are being taken here locally and how city leaders are getting involved. It's a crime that can impact anyone, but it's a crime some say isn't always taken seriously, especially among certain groups like African American and black women and members of the LGBTQ plus communities. I believe they're overlooked when it comes to certain things. I believe that um, people have the idea of um, it's not as serious for them. It's something Tahana Queen Zachary knows all too well. I myself as well experienced domestic, domestic violence at a very young age. So now she's working to make sure others don't have to experience what she did. It affects me in a major way. Like I would love to jump in and fix it right now. And while she knows a quick fix might not be possible, she still thinks there are things that can be done now. 
starting with the Domestic Violence Network's three-year equity plan. Well, we'd like to see some systems change, some education happen, um, people understanding and learning more um, about race and systemic oppression. The plan calls for safe spaces for survivors and increased education and prevention programs, all formed under the direction of people in those at-risk communities. The city's director of community violence reduction says some work is already underway, but she sees a major need for this plan. We've been going through a lot of the neighborhoods that have a really high call volume for domestic violence, such as the 46201 area, um, just delivering materials to the neighbors there so that they know that there's help available. And they're hoping this can be a step in the right direction. It needs to be more footwork done. It needs to be getting out in the communities, getting out, being involved in events that involve these um, these category of people as well, letting them know, you know, really, really what's available for them to take advantage of. Working for you, Megan Sanctorum, RTV6. And if you are interested in getting involved in one of the task force groups, head to our website, theindychannel.com or the RTV6 app. We will have more information posted there. For the third time in our country's history, the Senate will decide the fate of a U.S. president during an impeachment trial. The Chief Justice of the United States, John Roberts, has been sworn in to preside over President Donald Trump's impeachment trial. He then swore in the entire Senate body, including Republican Indiana Senators Mike Braun and Todd Young. Every senator took an oath to ensure impartial justice. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi warned senators not to become all the president's henchmen. That's a quote. The full trial is set to begin next week. Cold but calm. That's how I'd describe today. Just a few minutes after 6 o'clock. We're dry for roughly 24 hours. Then the focus on a winter storm system that will bring mixed precipitation and eventually rain. We have an advisory technically not in effect for Indianapolis, just to the north, anywhere from Crawfordsville, Lebanon, Zionsville, Fishers, Geist area, on up to Noblesville, anywhere to the north. That's not to say we're not going to see a wintry mix in Indianapolis and area south. I just think it would be more prolonged to the north. Snow potential, not a lot, inch or less. Then we mix in some freezing rain, a light coating of ice potentially. So we'll watch the bridges, obviously, overpasses. Those are first to show some signs of a problem. We follow that all up as the temperatures warm with rain. Inch uh, possible on the high end, more likely half an inch in spots. Let's pick out the timing. Friday afternoon, we're still dry. We get to the evening, the first area of snow mixing with some freezing rain and rain in the southern portion of the state. I'll finish this entire time line for you and then Sunday and Monday I don't know if it's a surprise but I'll show you what it is coming up back away from me now back away from me now back away from me now it is a story that is getting more than a thousand shares tonight on Facebook. A woman who is sitting along Georgia Street with her two dogs on a busy downtown night says a man approached her saying he was going to kill her. It's what happened next though that brings her to share her story. Our Nicole Griffin has the message all do dog owners will want to hear. The man approached us. He was coming very fast, very, very fast. It started as a night out downtown, visiting the Circle of Lights. This photo taken just moments before the story Emily Smith is about to share. He was just continuing to say he was going to kill me, going to kill my dogs. Emily's boyfriend was inside Kilroy's while she waited outside on Georgia Street with her dogs. That's when she saw a man turn the corner and come right for her. So I started backing up, backing up. With both dogs at her side barking, she says her training kicked in. Getting the words into my dogs, it's okay, it's okay. Emily is a professional dog trainer. We can sit. Good boy. Down. And she says her dogs were protecting her the entire time. She wanted them to know she was in control, telling the man this. Back away from me now, back away from me now, back away from me now. Eventually, he ran away and she called police to report it. Her story has now been shared on Facebook 1.5 thousand times. Her message behind it. Stay alert, especially women. Never think you're less of a target with your dogs, especially big, powerful dogs, because I wasn't. And start exposing your dogs and building that communication. It's so important. You're going to you know, step back and you're going to say, do not come any closer to me. Emily's advice is great for people with dogs, but we went to the school for self-defense in Carmel to learn what to do if you are alone. You establish 
with with your words what you're in, what you want. So a good one is just you know. Please don't hurt me. I like that one a lot because if they aren't trying to hurt you, they'll just stop. But if they don't, Michael Valenti says take all of your fingers and fire them into your attacker's eye. Another skill, fight back against your instincts. So I grab your wrist to pull you with me, right? And you do something like pull your hand out, right? So you so just like you rip your hand out, out of my grasp, right? Mm -hmm. You've done nothing to stop me from grabbing you again. Right. Right? But if instead I grab your hand and take come with me, you take your free hand, jab it into my eye, oh, yeah. right? Bang, you've attacked, and now the opportunity has been given to you to run. Valenti has three important takeaways. Always pay attention to your environment, avoid conflict, and learn how to de-escalate situations to try to avoid fighting altogether. Working for you, Nicole Griffin, RTV6. And there is a free self-defense training class at the School for Self-Defense on January 25th at 6 p.m. IMPD is also holding two free classes later this month. We will put the details on the RTV6 News app. All new at 6, two people are under arrest after a chase involving a stolen car ended on I-65 in Boone County this afternoon. Metro Police arrested the two after the driver stopped the car on the highway near State Road 267. Traffic backed up on both sides of I-65 following the chase as police responded to this situation. Everything is clear now and traffic is moving once again. A little more than a year ago, Purdue superfan Tyler Trent passed away from a rare bone cancer, but even in death, Tyler is still giving hope to others who are dealing with cancer. When Tyler died, he donated parts of his tumors for cancer research. The Indiana University School of Medicine has been using tumor models from Tyler cells to improve cancer treatments. Today, the IU School of Medicine announced that work involving Tyler's tumors has led to a new therapy that shows promise in blocking the growth of the tumors. When you get here and you see the amazing work that Riley is doing and the research team, it is, it just warms my heart. Mm -hmm. And to know that not only your son had something to do with this and your family might have something to do with this, but the research team are doing some amazing things mm -hmm. that is quite an encouraging. Mm -hmm. And so we are super excited about yeah. that. IU also says millions of dollars has been donated so far to the Tyler Trent Cancer Research Endowment at Riley Hospital. And covering the state house now, one of Governor Eric Holcomb's legislative priorities is to enact a hands-free driving law in the state. But whether that will happen is still up in the air. A few years ago, Indiana passed a law against texting while driving, but Holcomb and legislators say it's unenforceable. The current law does not outlaw sending tweets or reading emails. For example, under a hands-free law, you could still use your phone. You just could not be holding it while you drive. You could use GPS or a phone call through Bluetooth or on speaker. This is about saving lives, right? And and we know, fact certain, uh, that a uh, handheld device does three things uh, that eating a french fry doesn't do. One, it takes your brain off of what you're supposed to be paying attention to. Two, it takes your hand off of what you're supposed to be holding on to. Uh, and, and, and three, your attention is diverted. And so when your hand and your eyes and your brain are all doing something other than steering a car, uh, bad things tend to happen. But Indiana House Speaker Brian Bosma said some Republicans are not in favor of a hands-free law, saying it may infringe on personal liberties. Bosma said today he's warming up to the law and that the members are taking the issue seriously. Democratic leaders in both the House and the Senate have said they would be in favor of a hands-free law in Indiana. Tonight, police are searching for a missing man believed to be in extreme danger. And this tops the RTV6 news feed. A silver alert is out for 56-year-old Howard W. Chapel of Lafayette, Indiana. The Lafayette Police Department says Chapel was last seen Monday wearing a Purdue windbreaker and driving a white Jeep Cherokee. Officers say Chapel may require medical assistance and is believed to be in danger. If you have seen Howard Chapel or know where he could be, call the Lafayette Police Department or 911. Right now, police in Kokomo are searching for this man who's accused of robbing a bank. Officers say they received a report of a robbery at Security Federal Savings Bank on East Markland Avenue just after 1030 this morning. As you can see, a surveillance camera shows the suspect was wearing a hat with a Batman logo at the time of the robbery. Police described the suspect as a tall man between 20 to 30 years old. 
Call the Kokomo Police Department with any information. Two Jay County women now face murder charges. Police took 31-year-old Esther Stephen and 18-year-old Shelby Heastand into custody Tuesday. According to court documents, the women conspired together to kill 31-year-old Shay Breyer. Stephen and Breyer were reportedly in a custody battle. Police say Stephen distracted Breyer, then he stand shot him in the back with a rifle. The women are softball coaches at an Ohio school district. They have been placed on administrative leave. The city of Indianapolis will receive more than $6 million to go toward helping the local homeless population. The United States Department of Housing and Urban Development awarded a $6.3 million grant to the city. It will provide support to 20 local programs serving individuals and families experiencing homelessness. The FBI is changing its policy and from now on it will inform state officials if local election systems have been breached. That is according to an Associated Press report. In the past, the FBI would alert local governments about attacks on their electoral systems without automatically sharing the information with the state. That meant state officials might be in a position of certifying the accuracy of election results without realizing there had been problems in individual counties. This comes ahead of the 2020 election amid concerns that Russia or another nation could try to tamper with the vote. Coming up on the news at 6, another resource for parents who do not think they can keep their newborn child. A sports fan from Indianapolis in an exclusive club. Now he's not popping bottles. We'll show you what he's done to get himself into rare air in our Sports Extra Spotlight. Ah, uh, clear air today, that uh, sunshine leading to a beautiful sunset this evening. You've heard a little about the wintry mix on the way for tomorrow night, but then on the backside of all of this, very cold temperatures, I'll define very, coming up. Lazy boy, live life comfortably. This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. Another area of Indiana has a new way to keep newborns safe if the parents are thinking about giving up the child. Today, a new safe haven baby box was unveiled at the Cornersville Fire Department this afternoon. Connorsville Fire Department this afternoon. This is a picture of that box. The baby boxes are a safe and legal way for parents to surrender infants under Indiana's safe haven law. No questions asked. If you want to make some improvements to your home or maybe you're just looking for something to do, you can head out to the 98th annual Indianapolis Home Show this weekend. More than 900 experts will be offering decorating, landscaping, construction, and remodeling ideas. The Indianapolis Home Show starts tomorrow and runs through January 26th at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. The city of Carmel has brought back their heated igloos around Center Green, and they're up just in time for the cold snap to settle in. The igloos are fully furnished, heated, and offer a different way to enjoy the outdoors without having to suffer through the cold. The igloos, complete with comfy chairs and rugs, are free to use on a first-come, first-served basis. We'll test those out as we get to Sunday, Monday, how they hold the warmth. We're dry tonight. It's cold. Temperatures in the teens to lower 20s, but not as cold as we will be. Wintry mix tomorrow night. That includes both snow, freezing rain, and we'll add some rain to that by the time we get to Saturday. Warmer temperatures take over. As far as the light, freezing rain, freezing drizzle, less than a tenth of an inch expected. And you can see that includes areas south of Indianapolis as well. May see some very light snow. I was just looking at this, it's been 30 days. 30 days since we've had a measurable snowfall in Indianapolis. You go back into our big snow in the month of December. As far as our rainfall potential, most of this obviously arriving on the Saturday or overnight into Saturday morning, and that will be winding down by the time we get to Saturday afternoon. Storm system is still well to the southwest. The advisories stretch all the way into lower Michigan, but most of the action between Oklahoma City and Wichita, Kansas on the northern side of that. Temperatures with dry conditions, mid-20s, anywhere from Crawfordsville to Tipton Northwest. Temperatures did make it above freezing today to the south, but not by a lot. And with the breeze, felt colder. Temperature tonight, upper teens to lower 20s. That gets us kind of in the mood for these colder temperatures. We're cold tomorrow. That's part of the problem. Temperatures will start to warm up, but not before the precipitation arrives. So that's why we start with some snow, especially as we get toward the evening hours, maybe just before sunset. Then after sunset, mix in freezing rain and then eventually change this to all rain. The pink at 11 o'clock represents the freezing rain, a little burst of snow here. That's where we might get some 
of the light accumulation. Then as we go overnight, you see the surge of just good old fashioned rain as temperatures come above freezing. And uh, if it lingers in the morning, those areas from say Logansport, Kokomo, Muncie North may have a little uh, slick start to the weekend. Temperatures Saturday, don't get overconfident. That's just for the first half of Saturday. By noon, temperatures start to fall from 48. They'll land at 12 degrees on Sunday morning. The wind will be strong Saturday, gusting 30 to 40 miles per hour. Here's your seven-day forecast. As you look at this, dry and very cold Sunday, 19 for the high. 10 as we get to uh, Monday morning. Temperatures uh, start to recover from there, but generally it is a dry forecast for next week. Dave? Hey guys, we'll start a little birthday greeting. It's the legendary A.J. Foy, first four-time Indy 500 champ, a record 67 wins over his career. The original GOAT, Super Tex, turns 85 today, is celebrating down in his ranch in Texas, undoubtedly looking forward to a new race season, which begins March 15th on the streets of St. Petersburg, Florida. Time's ticking. We'll be there. Hey, good evening. From classics like Wrigley Field to the newest billion-dollar stadiums, one fan from Indianapolis has seen them all. Tens of thousands of miles traveled have earned him a spot in Club 123. Brad Brown with the Sports Extra Spotlight. Game day at Lucas Oil Stadium and familiar surroundings for Colts season ticket holder Scott Boltman Jr. But this is just one stop on an epic journey for a lifelong sports fan. My dad was big into baseball, and my friends in high school were big into baseball. And we always thought it would be really cool to do all 30 MLB stadiums. And as I started going on that list, and as I started getting close to being done, I'm like, well, oh, I like the other sports too. Scott has earned a spot in what's known as Club 123. He says only eight others have reached this very exclusive status. They've kind of grown a bond, a little fraternity with that. And from there, the nine of us that have been a part of Club 123, um, we like to kind of meet up and, I don't know, we just go above and beyond, so to speak. Their connection? Attending a home game for every team in North America's four major professional sports leagues, 123 in all. It started as a baseball thing and then just kept going from there. Scott's favorite in the major leagues, San Francisco's AT&T Park. I like it being on the waterfront, um, a right field seat. You can see the action on the field and then over to your right a little bit, you can see the ocean as well, which is amazing. The other place Scott likes most, right here close to home at Baker's Life Fieldhouse. They know how a basketball fan should watch a game. They know if you're sitting in the upper deck, you know, to try to get as close to the seat as possible, but yet you're still paying for the seat that you have. Um, it feels like they really put a lot of work into that. Finishing off the 123 is one thing. Now, Scott is having to keep up with all of the new stadiums and arenas. And 2020 will have Scott going to another set of brand new sports palaces. The Texas opens up, LA has two stadiums, Vegas has a stadium, so it's been fun keeping up. Good gig if you can get it, right? Scott's latest adventure, getting to all of the Division I college football stadiums. He's been to more than 60 so far. How cool is that? Finally tonight, first and foremost from the west side, the Pacers with their annual all-star reading program. Boomer was there, fan favorite. Uh, I'm honored to be a part of it this year. Pacers sideline reporter Jeremiah Johnson, also among those on hand today, visited the kids from Inlace Academy. What a great group. Can't wait to do it again. Tonight at 11, we'll check in with the Pacers, halfway point of the season, and a look ahead of the county tourney semifinals. Until then, the news at 6 continues after. On Rogue. Welcome back. Today's RTV6 photo of the day is from Steve Rainbolt of Plainfield. This is his dog, Harley. Harley looks like a natural in front of the camera or, or a little guilty. Or he got caught going into the room he wasn't supposed to be in, as Kevin said. Look at those ears. He's a cute pup regardless. So thanks to Steve Rainbolt for sending this in. Send us your photo of the day. Email it to news at wrtv.com. It could be a picture of your dog, your family, or something unusual you see. And if we select your picture, it will air here on the news at 6. I've got news for you. We've got some snow and freezing rain headed our way tomorrow. Less than an inch of snow, just light freezing rain potential, tenth of an inch, followed by half an inch to an inch of rain Saturday. It's going to feel like winter. We get it all. Harley looks like he's perking up for that forecast. Yeah, I'm sure. Oy. See you back here at 7 o'clock.